Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today I'd like to talk about touch on the drum set. It's not a topic that gets talked about a lot. And over the last 10 years or so, I've seen kind of an alarming change in the students I've had auditioned for me, both at the college and privately. Uh, they seem to be playing a lot tighter, so uh, it's been all wrist like this. And I think they learn a lot of that from um, marching band. A lot, of, a lot of these are high school kids that are thinking about auditioning for the college um, or just take, to take lessons. And, you know, the marching band thing now is very, very tight. It's gotten, I think, worse and worse as we have, we've had generation after generation of student that has gone through that system uh, play that way. And now it's to the point where it's so tight uh, that it's almost impossible to fix. So one of my missions is always to try to help students break out of that stiffness mold because of, cor of course if you play stiff then that cuts you off from all kinds of uh, things like it's going to be hard to be a really good orchestral player if your hands are just capable of two dynamics loud and louder and that goes also for a drum set and even hand percussion, where uh, a lot of that djembe playing, kunga playing, relies on sometimes a loose wrist rather than all arms. So today we're going to discuss this a little. And I have to say, a day doesn't go by where I'm not super grateful to all of my teachers for teaching me how to play in a relaxed and what I consider a correct manner so I can have a really long career. As I'm getting up in years, I find I'm having uh, just about zero fall off in my technical ability, uh, whereas many people I know who are in you know, my age, late 50s, knocking on 60, are, are having a lot of issues. And sometimes I give them lessons, um, be it online or in person, to try to fix some of these things. But sometimes it's just too late by the time you're that old, your body's pretty much molded into what it's going to be. But when you're young, in your you know, teens, 20s, even 30s, there's lots of time to fix these types of things. And before we go on, I'm just going to talk about the equipment I'm going to use today because I always get tons of questions, and this will save me some time. This is what I consider my practice kit. It's an old Gretsch Catalina that's very small, 16-inch bass, 12-inch tom, 14-inch. Uh, floor tom, this is a Slingerland 12-inch snare drum. And these are drums I just take out uh, every other day when I'm not doing other studio work and just play on for three or four hours because the bigger sets I have take longer to set up. So this one just plops down. It's pretty much all assembled. I could just move it. It's tiny. It's not loud. And I enjoy playing it. It's got a good feel to it. So that's the equipment I'm using. And then these cymbals, I'll list them in the description. So when I talk about touch, I'm talking about the way we use our bodies to play. Now, I've done lots and lots of videos on this. You can go to my hand technique playlist um, to look at uh, dozens and dozens of videos dealing with this, you know, how to play relaxed. I play a lot of things with brushes. You can look at those videos. Those rely on playing a certain way as well, which you might want to look at. But today, like I said, I want to concentrate on body motion, upper body motion. We're not going to talk about the feet. We'll do that in a separate video. So when I hit the drums, I'm always thinking about rebound. So when I hit a drum, I expect that stick to bounce up. I never, ever hit a drum like this. Okay? So that's the number one thing that if you're a teacher out there or a student or a professional, anybody, that you have to be aware of. If you hit a drum like this, all the time, you're just going to get one sound, and that is a staccato or marcato sound, a very accented, short sound. Problem is, that only works for certain kinds of music, the heavier kinds of music on the drum set. For lighter kinds of music, like jazz, even funk, uh, you know, recording especially, getting a good sound, you have to rely on bounce to get a good sound.
So you see there when I'm playing, I'm not using any kind of shoulder. I'm not using a full wrist motion there. Okay, I'm just dropping the stick. And I'm using my fingers a lot, a lot of fingers. And that's what my teachers taught me. Now, my teachers uh, were Joe Morello and uh, Fred Hinger, great timpanist. He taught me a lot about sound. He was known for having a huge, beautiful sound. He played with the Philadelphia Orchestra and the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. That was his whole career, two big, giant gigs there. And he, again, he was legendary for his enormous timpani sound. If you want to hear him uh, play, you can go on any of the old Philadelphia Orchestra records that Eugene Ormandy conducted and hear his massive timpani sound. And those recordings were done with what's called a decatree. So just three mics. Nothing was spot mic'd back in those days like it is now when you hear orchestra recordings. So anyway, they were all about touch. So Hanger's touch, timpani-wise, was just about playing on a drum like this. And of course, that's a German timpani grip, but letting that stick bounce off of the head, never playing into the drum like this. Because that created a harsh sound that, that wasn't pleasant to listen to for anybody, especially the conductor and the horn players right in front of you. So that's the first step uh, for this, is just getting that rebound, as Mr. Hinger taught. Now, uh, Mr. Morello, the, the drum genius as far as technique goes, taught me how to use my fingers correctly. So when I'm doing that, I am not using my wrist. I'm isolating. So the first couple strokes are free. In other words, they're going to bounce. That's what gravity does. And after that, you rely on your fingers. If you're playing like this, it's going to be really, really difficult <laughs> to function in many genres of, of music, especially on the drum set. So rebound is the number one thing that as an expressive drummer, musician, that you want to learn. That also enables you to play lots and lots of dynamic levels. So the arms do sometimes get used, especially around the kit. A great example of that kind of technique, and this is all on YouTube. You can The great thing about uh, any video channel is that you can go on there and basically see uh, some of the greatest musicians ever to play this instrument. So let's talk about Buddy Rich, sort of a phenom, you know just born to play the drums. He had incredible natural technique, but he played really, really relaxed, if you watch him. I see lots of young drummers today trying to emulate that, and they're super tight. They play like this, you know. They're all arms, okay? And they play, everything is loud. Buddy could play incredibly soft, just like Morello could. Just beautiful single strokes unbelievably soft and uh, and he could play incredibly loud too but he never played tight so his drums always sounded good now lots of drummers in those days were like that one of the greatest if you've not seen him play is Papa Joe Jones who in my opinion had the greatest technique as far as beautiful to look at and listen to of any drummer ever that's my opinion I know some people are not going to agree, but Papa Joe Jones, if you watch him on some of those clips, he was incredible. And I know that Buddy was heavily influenced by him, and probably maybe a little vice versa too. 
uh, they were both influenced uh, by each other. But a lot of the drummers back in those days, if you look at Big Sid Catlett, who had a school, so Philly Joe Jones studied with him. Again, that kind of technique, that beautiful, rudimental, loose, relaxed technique. They're not using their arms to play, okay? So there's lots of drummers like that, and I suggest watching them. So when I, when I was a kid, I was lucky enough to see lots of these players play live. I saw Papa Joe play uh, several times at the West End, a club up in, um, in uh, Uptown uh, in New York. So, you know, every time I saw him play with brushes or just hi-hat stuff or anything, and, and again, there's stuff uh, with him with, with Basie online you can find, uh, and just some incredible solos. There's even a great solo if you have that Danny Gottlieb book, The uh, History of Jazz Drumming. I think that's the name of it. Uh, there's a DVD that comes with that that's got a great Papa Joe solo. So one of the best things you could do for yourself is to watch some of these masters play. So again, Morello, uh, Buddy Rich, Louis Belson, beautiful technique, Papa Joe Jones, beautiful technique. Those are the guys I consider the pinnacle of technique. Some were more showy than others. Joe was not a real showy drummer ever. He wasn't sitting there twirling the sticks or doing all the tricks, but his sound was phenomenal, especially if you got to hear him live. And he played very quietly. He could play loud, but he also had incredible dynamics. So the technique we're talking about, that bouncing off the drum, is all uh, about that technique. Now, to learn this kind of technique, there's lots of books that you can use. Of course, you can go all the way back and use stick control to do it. And when you use stick control, instead of using a full stroke like this, you can use your fingers and bounce. So like that, all right? So you're just basically letting the stick bounce, and you're using the fingers to reinforce it. Some of the best ways to learn this, though, is by studying jazz, because to play jazz fast, you've got to have incredible control of both hands, obviously, and feet, but those hands are on automatic pilot. In other words, when I'm playing, I'm not thinking, the left hand's going to do this, the right hand's going to do that. It's all about the technique and the amount of coordination that you study. But the hand technique, the way you use your fingers, that's what's important, OK? So you don't see me there using a wrist or my arms playing like that. My arms are relaxed at my body. Basically, this is my resting position. Then I bring up my arms, and that's what I'm feeling when I'm playing. So it's all about dropping the sticks rather than forcing them down. And that's what I call a legato style of playing. Uh, and when you watch someone play, it should look good. If it looks like this, that's not pretty to watch. And it doesn't sound good either. It doesn't sound smooth. You want a smooth sound. So no effort at all, really, once you get control of the rebound of the stick. Now, for louder styles of music, of course, you want to use more force. For that, you want to let the sticks drop at a, from a higher level.
Now, one of the best ways to practice this, as I said before, you can use books like Stick Control, uh, Master Studies. I've done lots of videos on all that stuff. But is to just try to play on the drums and do these things I call resets. So a reset is when you feel yourself getting tight and you just stop and put your arms at your side and just basically be a cadaver, okay? <laughs> so, and then pick up the sticks and play. And you do that with the loosest, most relaxed grip. It should almost feel like the sticks are just going to fall out of your hands. Like that, okay? Joe used to do this thing with me. I'd be playing, <laughs> and we'd be doing something real fast or something, and he'd just knock my, my body, and my sticks would go flying, and he would say, that's great! Because <laughs> that's he wanted to make sure I wasn't holding the sticks too tight. Of course, he, he was blind. So he would do stuff like that, just joking around. But, you know, his whole thing was a really loose grip. And that's how, uh, especially when we were doing single strokes, he would do that. That's how he would know if I was loose, if he could just do that and he'd hear the clattering of the sticks falling on the ground. And I always remembered that. And when I'm playing, that's what I'm thinking. If I drop a stick, which might happen, I just pick up another one. It's not a big deal. But that loose grip is everything. So like I say in my other videos, when you look down, you should see a space here. If you're like this, you're clamping down on the stick. There's nowhere for it to go. If you're open like this, you have all that space to move the stick, okay? And again, th this is in a lot of my other videos. I also talk about, in some of these videos, the push-pull, which is this. <laughs> Well, the push-pull stroke is not difficult at all, really, if you have the ability to drop the stick. If you play with your wrist and your arms, it's impossible to play. But if you play loose, if you do that, then it's easy, because you're just dropping the stick, it's coming up, and you're just pushing it down with your fingers. That's it. So. So it can be used for all styles of, of music. And again, that loose, relaxed technique is what you need to be able to play those kinds of things quickly.
So you see there, a lot of what I do volume-wise is created with height rather than using my shoulders, like I've been saying, like this. I'm using height and the weight of the stick. Everything else is pretty much bounced. And I am obviously using some wrist, but lots and lots of fingers to do all that choppy kind of stuff. Now, when you play simple, all right, you don't have to tighten up. You can use that same relaxed feel. You might notice that I'm doing that kind of shaft tip thing on the hi-hat. So there I'm throwing the stick like this. So I'm bouncing the stick. Rather than trying to do this. Because if I do that, I don't have any variation in timbre. So everything's the same. If you learn to bounce the stick, you can move all around the cymbals and get all kinds of color like this. So you see how I'm using the hand this way, the hand that way, fingers, and different parts of the stick, like the shaft, okay, to do that. And I do it very quickly. If I have a stiff wrist, that becomes really impossible to do. All right, because you can't get the nuance. The stick is stuck. It's like a tool, like a hammer. All right, and, and all this goes against our natural instinct, which is to grab something, hit it, and eat it, all right, or whatever. You know, that's built into all of us, that kind of tool use mentality. Where this thing, there's nothing else in life you're going to do like that. Okay, that, that's an acquired skill. We're not born with that. So it doesn't come naturally, but that tight arm tool user hammering, that is a natural instinct thing that we all have from birth. And the thing is, we have to fight that and make the way you're supposed to play with rebound, fingers, that kind of whip motion, make that the natural way that you play. So all of you out there, please think about this and teach your students uh, finesse, playing quietly, playing with touch, playing sensitively, so we can always have this kind of beautiful drumming, which, uh, you know, as all the, the old timers die out, uh, I, we should try to keep that alive. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Take care.